Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Oh, look at that. I seem to be totally out of sync with myself. Oh, there we are. I'm back again. Quite often does that at the beginning. I have no idea why. I'm sure somebody could explain all the technicalities to me. But I just think, well, I don't know. I can't do anything about it. So that's it. So here we are again. Um, it's um, it's time for Talking Songs UK. The um, the good news is that we've actually hit today our total number of viewers since starting this little venture back in April. I think it was. We've had four, 47. 47,500 viewers, which I'm pretty pleased about. So thanks to all you guys for um, signing in and having listened to me rambling on with um, some of my special guests. And um, yeah, it's, uh, and, and do do drop me a line sometime. I mean, you, surely you've got nothing much else to do at the moment. So um, fully time, send, send me some message. Nothing rude, please. Um, and no more jokes. I'm, oh God, I've got jokes coming out of me. Here's. Um, and if you want to join the group as well, there's a, a Talking Songs group, so I can keep in touch with what's um, what's going on in the uh, in the near future. We've got some interesting people coming up, and I'll be posting a uh, a thing immediately after this show just to uh, tell you who we've got coming up in the next well, in December, in fact. Um, so, um, well, before I invite Mr. Steed on uh, into the show, into the studio, sorry, I'm a little bit sniffy today. Um, I've got hairs up in my stash up my nostrils, I think. So I'm going to sing a tune. And this, this is called Still the Blues. Got a big expensive house, fancy car maybe two. You got a real nice job, might even make a buck or two. If there's no one there to help you through the night, still the blues. Always eat the finest food, drink the very best wine. Clothes by your money, they look a lot better than mine. If there's no one there to hold and squeeze you right, it's still the blues. Now the blues can stick up on you, you never know from which way. You can never tell when the blues is here to stay. No matter how fine your slices, no matter what spice you use, it's the same old recipe, you're still cooking the blues. So pick up that guitar, my friend, give it all you got. Might not be a fender, might be made from a cigar box. It might not sing like Jimmy's or how right Steve Ray Bonds. It's still a blues. So come into the kitchen, or coming out of the cold. Feeling pretty lonely, probably feeling pretty old. You can serve it. With a can of beer or with a glass of wine, it's still the blues. Seems like there's no future, no recipe for success, but I'm sure you'll get over it all, more or less. But right now, at this moment, at this point in time, it's still the blues. Now the blues can sneak up on you, you never know from which way. You can never ever tell when the blues is here to stay. No matter how fine you slice it, no matter what spice you use. It's the same old recipe, you're still cooking the blues. So pick up that guitar, my friend, give it all you got. Might not be a fender, might be made from a cigar box. It might not sing like Jimmy's, or how like Stevie Ray Bonds, it's still the blues. It might not sing like Jimmy's, or how like Stevie Ray Bonds, it's still the blues. It might not sing like Jimmy's. 
or how like Stevie Ray Barnes, it's still the blues. Hmm. I like one a minute. It's enough locked up there. What happened? Oh well. Ah, that's interesting. I seem to have lost everything. Uh -huh. da, 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 da. Hey there, Nick. Can you hear me? Hmm. Sorry, people, I think I'm going to have to reboot something here because there's nothing coming through. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, you're there. I'm Good. there now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Oof, I don't know what happened then. Yeah, you you you, you kind of Disappear. when you were well, yeah when you were singing and playing you were yeah. kind of it was kind of slowing down and you were kind of singing in front of what you were playing so and then it that's, kind of disappeared. That's really, that's really weird because normally any timing fault is between the external feed and the internal feed, but. Right. So I don't know why that's happened. Oh, it's my, it's my aging laptop. I think it's been making funny noises. <laughs> it's been making funny noises today. Anyway, despite all that, we're here. How are you doing, Nick? I'm good. How are you, Roland? Um, <laughs> a After all that, that now. <laughs> um, I'll to stay off. Go back to back to decaffeinated coffee after this. Right, Mr. Nick Steed. Hello. Tell us something about when did when did it all start for you writing songs and playing a musician and everything? When did it start? What was your big influence? Who, who did you think, mm. "Wow, I want to be like that"? Was it uh, Raymond? <laughs> yeah, um, I was. It was probably around about I don't know six or seven years old. Um, yeah. Because me, my dad is is always a musician and he always had drum kits, guitars, and organs splattered oh, about the house. So, um, and he was a big kind of prog fan you know listen to a elp and um focus all yeah. these kind of people elo right camel. um I, I don't think you know never you never got into camel i did i like camel um yeah. but yeah it was all all that kind of stuff so i was kind of i was kind of fed that really at an early age and right. i've always you know i've always been into that sort of music the, the, the proggy kind of stuff mm. so um yeah, that's how it all came about. And then I kind of went to school, failed at school, and went to college, failed at college, <laughs> and then uh, and then carried on doing the music. Yeah, and see what I could get out of it, really. Uh, and all, all, always on keyboards. Yes. Yeah, I tried a bit of bass. Um, I did a duo once about twenty years ago with my mate. Uh, I played the keyboards and we added, mm. I did a lot of backing tracks on the keyboards and I played the bass. Mm. Um, so yeah, I did, um, did a bit of that, but it didn't last very long. Um, <laughs> stuck with the keyboards. I bought, I bought a couple of saxophones. Um, right. I tried to learn them. Um, they're now, well, one's now in the shed and, and one, I gave one away to someone, a mate of mine. Um, I've got a couple of flutes uh, and I bought a flute. Uh, primarily when with the trio uh, that I'm with years and years ago, when, about 20 odd years ago, yeah. when we started doing um, Hocus Pocus by Focus, I thought, well, right. I've got to do the flute. Yeah, I've got to learn that flute <laughs> solo. So uh, I bought it just for that. And it's been sat up there ever since because I've never really played it. I just don't do the flute anymore. <laughs> I just yodel. <laughs> just yodel a lot. God, is is that the only song that's ever had yet really yodeling in it? I think. Oh no, there's Frank. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a good thing yodeling, really, is it? No, no, <laughs> no. People, people. It's 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 great though because when you do it, 
well, we do it now and once, when i do it people are just like looking at you as if to say what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're just shot the shock on their face is like yeah is it all right they just, you know, they just can't believe it you think you're so a nasty, um a nasty turn yeah 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 i probably am at the time <laughs> 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 well, Nick, would you like to play us a tune? Give us one of your tunes. Yeah, yeah, I'll do. Um, I'll do one off off the the NS Five album called uh, Supercar Loan, okay, cool. and it's all about buying a supercar and not being out to afford it. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't either. Get out of bed at six, have a shave and a drink You're on the road by seven, ain't got time to think Well, the rush hour traffic keeps your mind alive And then you start your job from eight till five Well, you gotta grab every minute, every working day Put money in your pocket, you got bills to pay You gotta work till your fingers fall from the bone You gotta keep your bank happy with your supercar loan Well, your coffee break feels like it's been and gone Getting pressure from your boss, man, the job you ain't done Will you ask for the overtime to help with the stress? But it adds to the pressure, put your head in the mess Well, you gotta grab every minute of your working day But money in your pocket, you got bills to pay you Work till your fingers fall from the bone You gotta keep your bank happy with the super car Happy, you're in for a shout. Well, you jump in your car and you drive like an ass. Five miles down the road and you flat out of gas. Well, you gotta grab every minute of your working day. But money in your pocket, you got bills to pay. You gotta work till your fingers fall from the bone. You gotta keep your bank happy with your supercar loan. Grab every minute of your working day. But money in your pocket, bills to pay. Work till your fingers fall from the bone. You gotta keep your bank happy with your supercar loan. Supercar loan. With the super car loan With the super car loan Great. Knockout. Thank you. Knockout. Love it. Um it's interesting. What was there something that sparked that off? Were you sort of mm. I don't know? You see some dickhead in the <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or was it envy? <laughs> Probably a bit of both. Um, what it was, I, I used to work. I used to have a job, right? Uh, a proper job. You know, the people they, they call they call it proper jobs. Though when when you're a musician, it's not a proper job, is it? They don't call you a proper. Absolutely job. not. No. So uh, so I had a proper job. I was I was working in a printer's, and um, there's this guy there. He's a young guy. He's younger than me. And he was, he was into his sporty cars and stuff. Mm. And uh, he ended up buying this car and he just couldn't afford to run it. He just could <laughs> not afford to run it. He was basically sort of 
getting 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 to work in it one day and then getting the bus the next. So um I and it always stuck in my head that and and yeah. then years and years and years later um I, I thought oh I'm gonna write a song about that and yeah. that's how that's how it all came about. Excellent. Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the the interesting thing though for me is because I mean what 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 you're playing. I have to say I love the groove on that piano groove. Yes, that's yeah. fabulous. Thank um, you. Is is I mean it's essentially I mean apart from the uh, the instrumental side with with your, with your other other trio, it's very much mm. blues based. Very. And yeah. There's there's always this sort of um, slight dilemma about um, how do you how do you write blues songs mm. li living in 21st century Stockport. You know. Um, yeah, which yeah. To me and you. <laughs> exactly. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, 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 blues is, is it's quite hard because it's already been done. Yeah, and a lot of people put blues down to three chords. Mm. You know, it's uh, they've got that kind of mentality. You know, blues is just three chords. Well, actually, it's not three chords. It's you know, no. you can you can extend that and and make it sound a bit more interesting than. Absolutely. Than what it is, but there's a lot of bands that still do that, and you know, they yeah. stick to that three chord trick, and it, it gets a bit boring. So, you can understand why people, you know, don't quite get it and, and get a yeah. bit bored with it. But if, if you do it right and, and be a bit more interesting about it, um, oh, you know, absolutely, it, you know, I agree with you entirely. I mean, it's um, somebody said to me once, which I took as a compliment, he said, He said, You like you write blues songs with a sharpened fifth and a flattened ninth, and he said, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's I mean, blues has got elements of jazz in it, so you, you know you can throw you, you can throw a couple of those slight jazzy chords in it to yeah. to bring it up a little bit, which I've, I've done. Yeah. You know, I've done the same kind of thing. So, yeah. but the yeah. thing with the lyrics is that I mean, it's it's one of those things that I mean, inevitably, if I'm singing a blues, whether or one I've written or whether I'm I'm singing somebody else's, I'm gonna sing ain't rather than isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to. If I'm going to, if there's going to be a car in it, it's going to be a Chevy or a Pontiac. It's not going to be a Ford Cortina. Yeah. You know. Um. Or, yep. or even some even something fancy. You know what I mean? That there is that yep. tendency that we head for that. And yeah. Yeah. It, and I I think it's okay really. I I don't have an issue with it. Or else, or else I wouldn't do it. Um, no, no. And well, it's kind of. Go on. No, I was just I was just saying you're talking about Chevys and Fords. Yeah. Um, I wrote a song um, about Harley, Harley Davidson. Now, right. I mean, I, I ride motorbikes and I've got a Kawasaki, yeah. but it wouldn't right. quite sound right with a, a <laughs> Kawasaki. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's and it's right, and you and you're sticking to that kind of American kind of theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very much that's it. I, it's um, I, I was talking to somebody else about this, and um, the uh, like Robert Cray, for example. Um, he, somebody asked him the same question and, um, you know, a guy, very successful musician, you know, mm. fill the Royal Albert all for seven nights on the trot, all that sort of stuff. Um, so how can he sing about the blues? And, and he was saying, well, he, he, he writes as if he's an alter, uh, he's got an alter ego. Yeah. That still lives that, that sort of life, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but I, I think the, um, I still think it's quite, quite an interesting area, you know, as, as to how mm. we, how do we approach it? Um, yeah, I mean it's funny. I I know when we went to the states a couple of years ago, and, and sort of going to places like Memphis and you know Tennessee and and the Mississippi, and mm -hmm. you realise that when those guys are singing about the blues, it's not that far from what's happening out there at the moment. It's, it's yeah. still you know, yeah, it's a lot closer to it than obviously what, what our experience is. But I oh yeah, that, I don't think it makes it less yeah. valid. No, what, what just... about cool. No, I'm just saying. No, you got you got you got to work with the with the circumstances that you're in yeah you know writing songs in stockport you've got to think of something in stockport to, <laughs> to equate to what that kind of you know, you've not got the mississippi river you've got the river mersey so we have to yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it, even the mersey sounds more romantic i mean that's at least it's not pop song isn't it? But, uh, i remember many years being in a band in manchester and uh the, the one of the songs that the the, the singer had written had the line in it. I got to Matlock just before the break of day, and I never rang right for me. That you know. It's, you know. <laughs> so, um, so wrong. Yes, it is. Yeah, it, it, I, I couldn't explain it to him really. But, 
Brilliant. So, um, go on, give us a, give us another song and give it a, some a, again. The story behind it is interesting for me. I'm quite intrigued with this. Yeah, um, I'll do uh, I'll do Jack and Jill. <laughs> Jack and Jill. Excellent. <laughs> and where did that come about? Where did that come from? Where did this wow. one? This one came about. Um, oh, it was just. I had this riff on my head hmm. and um, I thought, all right, I'll write about a guy called Jack, a guy called Jack Bean. I thought, Jack Bean sounds good. I'll use that. And uh, I thought, yeah. So, so I started writing, you know, young Jack Bean. He's a dude. Hmm. And um, I thought, well, he's got to have someone with him. So I thought, oh, Jack, oh, Jack and Jill. Let's do, let's, let's do, let's do a version of Jack and Jill. But slightly raunchy. Well, it's not a raunchy version, but it's 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 an updated version of, of it's more gritty. More gritty, yeah, yeah. So that's and and it, I kind of wrote it in a in a few hours. It, it all kind of pieced together because it's quite a simple kind of tune, mm. really. Um. So yeah, and um. So yeah, that's that's basically how that one came about. It wasn't written about anyone or anything in mm. particular. And particularly, it just sort of gelled itself into that. As soon as I put Jack in it, I thought mm. you know, I've got to put Jill. But then, if I put Jill in it, then I've got to, I've got to do a kind of a a failed love story kind of yeah thing to it, but in a kind of jokey way. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so that's how it that's how it came about. Brilliant. <laughs> Here Let's we hear, go. Let's hear it. Young Jack Bean is the dude of the town Six foot three, blue eyes, hair brown He's got a very big farm with hills all around But lives on his own It's Miss Jill Rice, who's beauty and spice Always dresses well, smells real nice Gotta think for young Jack over that hill Sweet little mama, she's going in for the kill He's a quiet young man who works real hard Fixing up a Chevy in his old barnyard But a little bit dumb with the opposite sex Rob twists his belt with a 25 hex Joe goes to see him with a homemade pie Blueberry ripple, a glint in her eye Can't see what she wants him to see Whoa, hey Jack, try to some slack do yourself a favor, get the pail off your back. Stop playing cat and mouse and hey diddle diddle. Run and chill around like a piggy in the middle. Said, hey chill, you're gonna make a spill. Tumbling up the jack down the crook of that hill. Said it's plain hard to get, it isn't a crime. Work out in time, yeah. Jill's determined and one given A good strong heart, she'll take it on the chin So try again with a looks and a charm And a best car on pose Jack likes Jill but is hooked on his car It wouldn't even matter if she flashed him her bra But she can't see what she wants in a scene Hey Jack, cut us some slack Do yourself a favor, get the pill if you're back Stop playing cat and mouse and hey diddle diddle Run and chill around like a piggy in the middle Said, hey Jill, you're gonna make a spill Tumbling up the jack down the crook of that hill Said it's plain hard to get, it isn't a crime Work out in time Hey Jack, 
Cut us some slack Do yourself a favor Get the pail if you're back Stop playing cat and mouse And hey diddle diddle Run and chill around Like a piggy in the middle So then Hey chill You're gonna make a spill Something up the jack Down a crook of that hill It's playing hard to get Listen to crime Work out in time yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's, uh, who are who are your um, your heroes when it comes to records? <coughs> my heroes. Well, I don't accept... Yeah, go on. Uh, my heroes are the heroes that probably not a lot of people know. I mean, keyboard players usually mention people like Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder, and you know, no, mm. I've, I've never been. I've never been into Ray Charles. To be fair, I like what he does. It's great, you know, but it's, it's not influenced me. Um, keyboard players have influenced me are uh, people like uh, George Duke, um, yeah, uh, Chick Corea, Jan Hammer, uh, yeah. Greg Fillingaines. He's a he's, he's more a session player, but he's, he's worked on every album that you probably know from the yeah. Know that, know yeah. That name. Um, do you know, the, the funny thing is, before I ask you the question, do you know hmm. who sprang to mind? George Duke. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know why, because I, I mean, but I, I think we talked briefly the other day about that sort of whole 70s yeah. jazz rock stuff. And I, I mean, I yeah. was, I was yeah, heavily into that. So I yeah. saw George Duke and people like oh, that. They were yeah. amazing people. Incredible, incredible player. Um, and a guy called David Page from uh, Toto, keyboard player. He, yeah. he, he actually influenced me a lot because I, I watched a lot of the live stuff. Hmm. I've seen him live twice and his, his playing style, because he, he, he was doing a lot of Steely Dan stuff back in the 70s because yeah, yeah, yeah. To, Toto with a, with a session band. So yeah. um, so a lot of his playing has, has certainly influenced me as well. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, those, those kind of guys. Yeah. They're the ones that I was listening to, you know, when I was at college and, and yeah. you know, when you were at college, you got the little chick career stuff and you go, how does he do that? You know, yeah. get, get that bitch pen going. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was all weird and wonderful stuff. And then obviously when you're at college and you listen to all them people, you get introduced to other people yeah, and, and all these other amazing musicians and, and bands mm. and, you know, so, yeah. Mm. And they were, they were, I mean, they, um, there were some staggering players about at that era. I mean, oh, there was incredible. Lots of staggering players. But I mean, I, I can remember mm. seeing Chick Corea doing a duo gig. I think he only did one in, in the UK with just him and Steve Gadd at the Barbican. Wow. Flipping out. Which was the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. It was just. Wow. It was, amazing. That, was, that was really genuinely awesome. Yeah. Um, amazing. And they were. They were Having said that, I mean, you, you, you've gone through that and, and you're still doing some of that sort of, you know, incredibly technical stuff. Um, mm. <clears throat> but, the, but the blues thing is, 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 is a slightly different, well, it's a different approach in many ways, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I find it easier. Yes. Um, I find it a lot easier. I mean, you can just, you, you know, you can bang out a, a blues tune mm. quite easily, um, even throwing in, you know, a few nice little tasty chords here and there yeah. but yeah. but when it comes to the other stuff and writing it's it's really hard um i did a I did a, we had a band about oh it was eight ten years ago called optimistic visionaries hmm. and um i wrote most of the stuff and greg the drummer he wrote some tunes as well on it hmm. and it was the hardest stuff i played and it was it's basically jazz fusion prog yeah. and it was like 15 8 and 13 8 and you know some really dramatic time signatures and 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 then musicians were you know top class players yeah it was, it was a really good band um and then i kind of moved away from that and and concentrated more on easier kind of music um mm -hmm. then i did the you know obviously did the 
Well, I think after that band, I, I joined Norman, and right. um, so I was doing the I was doing the blues circuit in Europe quite a lot with uh, with Chris Farlow and Larry Garner mm. and Norman, <clears throat> and um, so yeah, I was quite involved in doing that sort of twice twice a year. Mm. Um, and and, quite a different, quite a different approach. I mean, because uh, mm. if if you're writing, I mean. Um, Having listened to some of the stuff by the the, the, the trios recording, yeah, um, it is immensely complex. I mean, yeah. sort of, it's not the sort of thing you can you could you couldn't hand out the dots and say, okay, two, three, no. four, and, and hit it. Could you really? No, no. Uh, yeah, it's well, I, I was I was missing all that. I mean, mm -hmm. doing the blue stuff was it's all right. You know, it's good mm -hmm. fun and it's it's easy to do. And there's loads of solos, and you can have a really good time doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it wasn't really, you know, it's not really where I'm at. Mm. What I like, I like to do something that's that's that makes me think a lot more than, mm. you know, rather than just throwing a solo over a. Mm. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I love it, but it's mm. just I like a bit more of a challenge. So mm. um, with with the trio, uh, we've been like I said, we've been playing together for twenty odd years in in various kind of styles. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we said, why don't we just do the progress stuff or why don't we do very much like the optimistic stuff mm. and, and throw some vocals on it as well and do some instrumentals. Mm. Um, and that's when we started writing um, all that stuff. And and then we had a chat the other week and said, well, why don't we do some optimistic stuff? Because we can mm. do all that. So that's so I had to pull all that out, which was an absolute nightmare. So I forgot <laughs> it all. So I'm at, I had to put one of the tracks on. You, you got one of these slow... Uh, speed slow down things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to yeah. put the track on a slow down about half the speed it should have been, just to try and out and find out what chord or what note I was playing there. What was all <laughs> that about? And it took it took me hours to just work out this particular track, hmm. and um, and rewrite it all. And then another one that we we're looking at doing, I've actually rewritten it um, to suit because. There were there were sections in it with the, with the bass was was all over and so because mm. I'm doing the left hand bass in the trio. Yes, yes, I listened to that. Yeah. So um, I had to sort of work it where I'm I'm doing something that I can actually play without knocking me out when I'm doing something else. So I think we got around it. <laughs> I think we got around it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting what you say about. Um, um, the, the, the difference between playing the, uh, the if you like the technical stuff and playing the blues and you say well it's it's easier to do and and, mm. I, and I would agree with you but I, I don't think either of us would say that that's diminishing what the blues is about not so, at all no in, no no in the sense that I mean it, in fact it was Hendrix who said that the blues is easy to play but it's a lot harder to feel I was uh, just about yeah I was just about to say that I mean the, the problem with the blues is everyone you know you know in Stockport mm. everyone plays the blues in Stockport. But not everyone can play it very well, yeah. Um, and that's gen that generally goes for the whole world. It's not stop or uh, UK. It's you know anyone can play the blues, mm. but not everyone can play it with feel and and you know and and properly. Mm. You know the it's you know they can cut corners on it and, and maybe play a pentatonic scale. Mm. But you know you got to. You, it's all about blues. Is all about feel and you, yeah, you know you, exactly. you got to. Feeling dynamics, you know, you got to have those dynamics. You got to watch the band for, you know, and bringing it down and mm. and bringing it back up, and and that's what's really good with Larry. You know, he's yeah, he's the, he's the master of, of of dynamics and and feel. Mm. You know, he's, he's a great great field player, and so y you learn a lot from working with those guys. Mm. Um, how to play? Yeah. I mean, anyone anyone can play, but once you play with those guys, you know, like Norman Larry. You know they they know how to play, yeah, and and, and so you learn and from I them as well. What, I think what you're saying about that is is absolutely true, but it's also in in terms of the um, the actual feel of it. I mean, I when when we lived in Italy, I mean the blues is huge in Italy. I mean, mm. uh, it's it's you know there's the, the, a friend of mine out there set up something called the Blues Made in Italy, which was the first idea to people do some something. And he uh, arranged to have this first sort of meeting in a, a little bar in Verona. And he was hoping he'd get 
you know, 150 people turn up, like 950 people turn up <laughs> in, in a bar that's <laughs> half the size of the spinning top, you know. <laughs> and and wow. that, I mean, but they, they are such enthusiasts. And mm. some of them are fabulous players. There are some really, really good players, are they? But mm. there's quite a lot of them who are technically very good, but don't quite know how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, and, and quite a lot of the time, and this goes, this goes for all over the place, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it's in Italy or in Britain or, or, or in the States, you, you know, you can see a band and you realize it's, it's, it's four people on stage and there's no interaction going on between them. No. They, no, start, they yeah. start in the right place and they end in the right place, but in between they're just. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've always, I've always said to, to other, you know, other people in bands, you know, the, the secret is to watch. You've got yeah. to watch each other's playing. If you don't watch each other, then you, you, you're knackered because, you know, I've, I've seen it with, I've seen some really great keyboard players. I mean, it, far superior to what I can ever do. And, you know, jazzers. Yeah. And, you know, they'll, they'll be doing a solo, but they'll be just, they'll just be, they'll just be lock, locked into the keyboard and not watching anyone. Yeah. yeah. And so everyone's sort of playing and, 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 and waiting for, for him to stick his head up so he can stop playing and the guitarist can get his turn in. And he's just, you know, he just gets carried away. And it just doesn't, you know, you need to, everyone needs to watch and, and, and focus Absolutely. on each other. Absolutely. Just to tell you a quick story. I, I was at um, the uh, Blues and Rock Festival down in Skegness. I've done it the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a jam session. And I, I'm not a big fan of jam sessions because of those sort of reasons. Yeah. And anyway, they, they put me on with these three guys. And... Uh, uh, it didn't, it wasn't gelling at all. And I'm thinking, all right, well, okay, I've done enough now. I just want to stop. And I'm looking around trying to attract somebody's attention so we can actually get through the, the and nobody's paying the blindest bit of attention to me, right? And I'm going, because I'm singing as well as playing, and I've started, the, and, you know, I'm trying to direct it, but nobody's watching me. And I get, so they get to a point, and I'm going, like oh, this, nothing happens. And finally, I just got up the mic and I went, Oi! And all three of them just stopped dead. <laughs> and it was, I said, <laughs> you, you could have heard a pin drop. And I was just no stood way. there in silence. And I just said to the mic, I said, I wasn't quite what I meant. <laughs> and I went off and the guy was running, it came over and said, I'm so sorry, Robert. I didn't realize there was such a bunch of toss. But um, it was unbelievable. <laughs> It also turned out that the, drum, the drummer was left-handed playing a right-handed kit and the bass player oh. was also a drummer. So it wasn't a great starting point. Oh, dear. But, oh dear. Um, yeah, paying attention is is, <laughs> is is 100% of it, yeah. Yeah, paying attention and, and, and like I said, dynamics, you know, is if it yeah. comes to, to if it's come to a quiet section or you, a guitar wants to sort of start quietly, or, mm. yeah, everyone comes down and, you know, you, and then you bring it back up to, yeah. you know, for the... And then just bang it out. I mean, just simple things. And, and a lot of bands Absolutely. don't do that. Yeah. No, yeah I think just... you're absolutely right. Mm. And I've, I've learned, like I said, I've learned so much over the years working with different people and, and, and the way they, way they work. And you're always learning. I mean, you never stop learning. Um, well, absolutely. But... Yeah. Because it, it, it's really weird because every now and then you see, um, it, you know, like on Quora or something on, on, or some on Facebook, and somebody will say something like, "How long does it take to learn the guitar?" <laughs> <laughs> well, what a ridiculous question! Forever. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, you know, I've, yeah. I've, been, I've been playing for fifty years now, and I still every now and then I'll pick my guitar up and something totally new mm. will come. I think, why, why haven't I noticed that before? Yeah, and it, yeah. it, it can be the simplest thing, but. Anyway, um, what are your plans? What, what, what's, what's your plan with the, uh, with the trio then, do you think? Are you saying about doing some, bringing some, bring some of the other stuff in from the, the older version of the band? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a th being a three-piece band, you, you've got to kind of – I mean, I've got – in the trio, I've got one – so I've got four keyboards, but it's, it's right. very kind of Rick Waitman-y kind of thing going on. <laughs> um, I've just not got the cape. Um, so I've got to, you, you kind of got to work out what, what you can play and what you can't play and what yeah. you, you know, what you, there's, there's, there's ways around that. Um, so yeah, so we've, I've, we've picked a few of the, the optimistic tunes to do, and I've also been writing some new stuff, 
because um, I've got not much else, nothing much else to do. Um, <laughs> so I've been working. Yeah, I was working on this kind of thing this week, which mm. is is very kind of yes mm. kind of vibe going on. Um, and then it goes to a kind of a, a Genesis type of nine eight section. Go on, place a bit. Place a bit. It's, it's, oh, it's, flip it out. Um, <laughs> I know you can't play the whole thing. Just just well, to see how, how the process goes on in your head. I'm not going to pinch any. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> right, it's the the kind of intro is it is a kind of yeah. that kind of thing, and then yeah. you've got a nine eight, which is. Uh, And then it kind of that goes round and round. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, well, I've always got odd time signatures in my head. Hmm. I'm all I'm always banging out in my head. I don't do a four four in my head. It's always it's always something stupid. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's like I mean I don't know. I wrote all these 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 blues albums in in four because um, that's just yeah. I've always always I've got a seven or a nine or a Mm. 11 in my head that I'm, I'm banging something out and it usually happens when i'm driving you know you'll you'll, you'll kind of hum something and, and be pretending to play a drum the drum kit on your on your steering yeah, wheel yeah. and then you'll pull over get your phone out hit record and then just make yeah. a some, some kind of weird sound and then get it home and it'll sound completely different when you've when you finish with it <laughs> so um but yeah it's it, it, that's the plan and greg's writing some stuff as well um he's got loads of tunes i mean he's, he's a great musician hmm. um and pete has, has been writing some great stuff as well um he, he wrote an idea that we've been swapping <clears throat> and um, we we kind of come up with something hmm. um and then it's a case of putting lyrics to it hmm. and and lyrics it's a weird thing lyrics because i think with what what i found with the, the kind of prog stuff um, you can write lyrics about absolute nonsense. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, absolute nonsense. And um, as long as as long as it rhymes with something else, yeah. and it's it's got the it's got the moon or the stars or yeah. something kind of spacey in it, you're all right. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so I've got I've got I, these I, two. I think Pete Pete Brown was the master of that, wasn't he? Pete, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he I mean, definitely was. Theme for imaginary western and stuff like that. Yeah, great tune. Yeah, great tune. I, mean, I love that. I, I yeah, love all that. In fact, that whole um, what was it called? Songs for a Taylor album. Yep. Yeah, I, he did. I, I, saw, I saw that being launched. I was in. I was living just outside London at the time, and I went to see. It was Jack Bruce and Friends, and it was wow. him, him, uh, Mike Mandel on keyboards, Bloody Larry hell. Coriel on guitar. Oof. Wow. And and Mitch Mitchell on the kit. Oh, no. And it was launching that album. I mean, oh, and no. I, I loved it. I loved it to bits. Um, yeah, we did. Um, I worked with Pete about four years ago. We did yeah. uh, Master in Western and mm. uh, what else did we do? There's a few of his we did. Um, he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. We, we, we're at the bar and we're, we're chatting about buses. <laughs> he got he got he got on the subject of buses. He said, "Yeah, I said I've just bought this uh, double decker bus, and um, I've just bought I've got this other double decker bus, and I've got another bus, and you know, he's going on about buses." Mm. And um, so I turned around and we went, "Flipping it! How big's your house?" He went, "The models, they're not real." <laughs> 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 you say the model is just wrong that big, <laughs> but yeah. I, th- I thought it was going to turn out like Chris Farlow, who collects his military vehicles, is his thing, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was military paraphernalia. Yeah, but he, he, he did of sorts. Buy, he, he did. He did own a couple of you know. What do they call them? Armored cars or something other at one point as well. Oh, did he? I, don't, yeah. I knew. I knew he. I knew he owned a lot of other things. That yeah, yeah. And, and um, Wakeman as well, wasn't he? He wasn't. He was into. Yeah, he was. He was into that stuff, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And he tells thought- a wonderful story about when he was touring with with Yes in in Moscow, and he'd said he wanted a um, um, a Russian general's uniform, <laughs> and some some or other word had got out to somebody who was in the know, and uh, he was telling he, he got. Met up with this guy, and a guy said, Okay, well, I've got this. And he said, We've got this place, we've got this place. And they sort of go down this back, so they come to this huge warehouse. And he thinks, Oh, it's going to be full of clothes. And he goes in, and it's just full of military stuff. And it's not just clothes. He said, There's like missiles in there, and, and jeeps and tanks. He said, I could have bought anything. <laughs> wow. You know, this would, have been, this would have been like in the what, 70s, I suppose. Jeez. Late seventies, early eighties, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> <weird. laughs> the so um you talked before you were talking about collaboration in terms of the the um the, the, the jazzy stuff. When you when you songwrite, do you write those on your own in the main or yeah. 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 Um I'll write um I'll write the basic tune. Hmm. Um, I'll record it. Hmm. Um, I'll put everything on it. You know, I'll, I'll put really fake guitars on it and, yeah. and fake drums and all that kind of rubbish <laughs> and, and horrible bass lines. And then I'll I'll get an arrangement that I'm happy with. Hmm. And then I'll pass it over to the lads and, and say, what do you think? You know, yeah. is, do you think it's any good? Yeah, hmm. if it's not. And, it, you know, it, most of the time, yeah, it's fine. And, and yeah. then maybe it'll be, well, why don't we just, do this, you know, why don't we change this section? Hmm. Um, so generally, I mean, I think the three stuff I wrote all but three of those songs, I think. Hmm. Um, but it was, it, it's, it's a case of when you, when you, when you write in stuff, hmm. because I'm not a drummer and I'm not a guitarist. So I, I, I mean, Greg has got an electric kit at home, so I'll record the track. I'll send him the track and say, what do you think about that? And he'll say, right, take the drums off it, send me the track, <laughs> and he'll put his proper stuff on it. Yeah. And and then, obviously, we use that as an idea. And then mm. same with Pete, you know, I'll, I'll, mm. and Pete will he'll, he'll put his, his bit on it. Mm. Um, and then once we're happy with it, then we'll go in the studio and record it because, you know, we don't want electric drums and all that kind of rubbish on it. No. So um so then we'll we, i think with this album we rehearsed we were rehearsing a lot with it mm. because um and we were because pete's got a bar in map so we were, we're playing the bar quite a lot mm. um and then we we made a point of rehearsing before we went to the studio rather than going to a studio and and stopping every five minutes because we didn't mm. get a bit right so most of those tracks were one takes uh, maybe a couple of takes on a few of them yeah um and then yeah, so that, that's now oh, that's where the, the the next album we've we're we're all I mean we're all involved in it. I mean Pete yeah. wrote the pumpkin soup on the other one, and he wrote set me free uh, on the other one, and Greg wrote the actual lyric line for it, and I wrote the lyrics. Right. Um, so because um, we 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 kind of Pete wrote the tune and then. I said, well, I'll try some lyrics on it, you know. So I kind of mm. sang this thing, and, and we, we were kind of playing it, like, for a while. And then, you know, Greg turned around and says, you know, I'm not I'm not a big, big fan of that lyric line, you know, the, the way you're mm. singing it. Um, so I said, oh, cool. But, you know, he, he said, I've got an idea. Mm. So he started singing it, um, and it sounded great. Mm. So I, I used that lyric, you know, the, the actual lyric line, the ad and then change the lyrics slightly to, to fit in with that. And it just completely transformed the song. So I said right. to Greg, yeah, I said to him, I said, you know, if, when I've got another tune, it says, you, you saw a better lyric line out than me, mate. So he's, <laughs> that's his job. He's, he's really good at, like I said, he's, you know, he's, he's not only a great drummer, he's, he can play bass and guitar and mm. play a bit of keys. So he's, he's, he's a really good musician. He's got a good ear. It's good the way that it's very interesting when you talk about sort of like the, the collaboration in terms of like you're you're assembling it between you, mm. but it's all sort of like bouncing ideas off each other. And, and yeah, yeah, I think in order to do that, you've got to have a lot of um, faith and trust in 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 the guys you're working with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're the really accomplished players, and um, they've got some great ideas. So mm. 
they can do things that you wouldn't think of. Mm. Um, you know, things like, you know, there, there might be a section where you think, well, I don't know what to do with that section. And then, you know, Pete will say, well, why don't we just try this? Mm. Why don't we just do a simple thing? You know, yeah. just do something really simple and then build it up. Yeah. And then we can, we can do this. And, and Greg will say, well, yeah, well, what about if we do this and, and put this accent on here? And, uh, you know, to lift it. And I'll say, yeah, well, I can do that. And then I can maybe change that chord there to to give it a different scope. Yes. So, uh, I mean, one of those tunes on that album, um, If Only Dreams Were Like This, I kind of got the idea from, um, oh, what's it called? Jeff Beck. All right. Um, um, what was it called? What was the song called? Um, well, the name escapes me. The well-known Jeff Buck song, instrumental. Um, and I've forgotten what it's called. But it was very, it was very, it was based very much on that. Um, but there's one thing I, I learned from Frank Zappa, because <clears throat> we're big Zappa fans as well, so we, we oh, try right. and kind of yeah. do a variety of, of ideas. Yeah. Um, and I, I watched a, a, an interview on, on Zappa mm. years ago, and he said, you know, he's... And someone asked him, he said, well, when, when you write a song, mm. um, and it's, it's a really nice song, but then you put this really odd thing in it. Mm. He said, well, what's the point of having a really nice song if you're not going to ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> so so um, this particular song, it was, um, was very much like that. I wanted to, mm. it started off, it starts off really nice. And, mm. and I thought, you know, we can go on with this. Mm. We can, I could leave it there and, you know, maybe put a, a guitar solo in the middle. Um, and then maybe a keyboard solo, and then and just and then fade it out. But I don't really want to do that. I want to kind of mess it up a little bit. So we, I, I put this mad section in the middle of it, which kind of, and we did it. We did a gig a few months ago, and um, we did that tune. And this this guy stood up at the end of the tune, and says, "Mate, I love that song." He said, "I was I was I was engrossed, and I was just kind of, you know, I was just going off into a dream world." <laughs> and then suddenly you hit me with that thing, that section. It, said, it, it destroyed my mind. I said, well, that was the idea. I said, it's like a dream thing. And then it goes into a nightmare. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Love it. I, I have to say, I, I think in terms of uh, in terms of Zappo, I was lucky enough to see him quite a lot of times. But one of the things I've always loved is that lyric about, I'm going to buy me a horse about this big. Yes, yeah. Line. The yeah. I, cause the, I remember when I first heard it. Yeah. So I, again, I, I was lucky. I saw, when he was launching that album, I saw him at Wembley, was, and uh, that was extraordinary. I was mean, that Montana? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Overnight sensation. That's overnight sensation. Great album. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's got I'm the slime on it as well, which is another of my favorite. Yeah, we do that. <clears throat> do you? Oh, yeah, we do. I'm, yeah, we do. I'm the slime. Uh, Uncle Remus, trouble every day. Cosmic debris. Right. And something else. Um, yeah, we do a few of his. But yeah, I'm the Sam's great. Great tune. Right. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. So listen, let's have another song. Yeah. Um, we'll do something, do something different now. Um, <laughs> something completely different. Something completely different. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't want Whoop. that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a prog mode. <laughs> we'll do um it's a, it's a tune I wrote off off the off the last solo album mm. um and it's all about um billy the kid okay now how i wrote this was wikipedia <laughs> i read <laughs> i read wikipedia <laughs> On Billy the Kid, right. and I, I wrote a song from Wikipedia on, on Billy the Kid. Don't ask why. I don't know. It just Billy the Kid just came up. I thought, oh, interesting story. Let me read about it. So I, I pulled up Wikipedia and, and I, I read it, and I thought, yeah, can you use that. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, that's how it. Brilliant. That's how it all came Let's do it. Oh. 
Bonnie was a young boy when his mother passed away. Room at a boardhouse, a job that pays way, trying to find a reason to make that life his own. First shop was a laundry, selling clothing and two girls. Skipping from the lawman, living his life on the run, trying to make a reason to make that life his own. He lived on the edge, it's on trying. The devil came, took your dreams away. Moved to Arizona, where he worked on Hocus Farms. Slim the Johnny Mackey, and the two men took a pause, building up his bounty. With the crimes they took upon. He lived on the edge, kept on trying. Devil came, took your dreams away. Lived on the edge, kept on trying. Devil came, took your dreams away. That day, Billy Moon circles. With a bounty on his head, Garrett saw him coming, fired that bullet, and he was dead. He had to find a reason to make that life his own. He had to find a reason to make it on his own. He had to find a reason Nice Sad, Excellent. very sad <laughs> Yes, good sad. Thank you I like, the, I like the idea of actually just It's, it's, it's a lovely just, just taking a story and thinking oh, okay, I'll, I'll use that Yeah, and, and, and Wikipedia seems, it seems to be a good place to start I mean, you can get all yeah. sorts of, of, of stuff on there and and uh, yeah, I just kind of broke it all down. I, I read the whole story on him, mm. and then I kind of broke out certain sections. I thought, well, I can, yeah, I can maybe use that to say this and and mm. blah blah, and 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 yeah, it all it all just kind of pieced together. And one of the things it's, it just reminded me of Randy Newman because what's the one he wrote about the flood? Yes, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a really good tune. Mm. Yeah, someone mentioned in, to me about that a while in, ago. In a, in, a, in a sense, your 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 style of piano in that was quite randy newmanish i thought yeah there's another tune i did um yeah there's another tune i wrote which was which was kind of randy newmanish come mm. billy joel mm. kind of style um yeah and people said oh it's, it's a bit randy that isn't it i said <laughs> is it <laughs> Cool. <laughs> trust, trust me it was meant as a compliment <laughs> yeah 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 i hope so <laughs> well that, that, that's the fun that's the funny thing about you know when you're writing a song mm. um if, if 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 you're writing a song and and you, know, you come up with an idea and then someone will say oh, i've heard that before mm. or i've heard that, that that reminds me of a song mm. or it reminds me of this song i said well i've never heard that song so i ain't stole it you know it's <laughs> it's just it's just how it's come out so um yeah I, it's, it's I, weird. I used to have this argument with my my bass player going out there myself not not an argument but a slight disagreement on bass slight player disagreement. Out, uh, in Italy because he'd say uh, I I'd, I'd play him something and um he'd, 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 there'd be something that strikes him you know and he'd hear something and he'd say um oh it's like <coughs> so and, so. and it was only like th three notes in the melody that sounded like something and he'd say oh it's like so and so mm. And I used to say, yeah, it's exactly like that. The title's different, 
the lyrics are different, the rhythm's different, and the key's <laughs> different. But you're right, it's exactly the same. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody somewhere is going to have done three notes and done the same as you wrote in a song that you did last week, you know, so yeah. it's, uh, you can't yeah. avoid that. No, no. Listen, Nick, we've um, uh, we, we've chatted a long time, and everybody gets to play four songs. You've only got around, I've only let you do three so far, so I really feel it. Um, That's okay. No worries. Um, I, I think it'd be nice for you to finish off with another. One. And we and we did lose a bit of transmission at the beginning. So ah, uh, yeah. I'd yeah. love it to finish off with another tune for us. It's been good fun talking to you, mate. And it's I been hope, great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And yeah. I hope after this is um, the, uh, we emerge from this uh, current scenario that we actually. Um, Get to have a beer and a chat together. You maybe do, do a bit of playing together. That'd be good. Absolutely, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That'd be nice to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what's your last yeah. song then? Should we do "Behind You"? We'll do one of the trio songs. It's kind of uh, yeah. if I can remember it. It's <laughs> one of you got to count, isn't it? You got to count. This is one where I'm going to have to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Here we go. Just now don't want to feel the pain So escaping from the past It won't ignore you You try to run them all the devils that you hide But you know that they will always be behind you Behind you Behind you from your mind, but escaping from the past, it won't ignore you. Just close your eyes and dream it all through space and time, but deep down you know that I'll always be behind you. Thanks such a lot for um, coming to have a chat with me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, Roland. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. And great. as I say, when we get back to normal, we'll uh, we'll meet up in real life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, catch that <laughs> beer. Keep, keep me posted on on everything you're up to, and um, 
I will. Uh, we've, yeah. we've given it, we've given everybody a um we've got their web there you go. Well, there's a website there, so everybody knows where to find your stuff. Is that along the bottom there? That's the one, yes. <laughs> There it goes. It's there it goes. It's, it's difficult to do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, look, there it is. <laughs> yep, there it is. Great. Cheers, Nick. Brilliant. Thanks. Cheers, Rolly. Take yeah. care, mate. All the best. See you, man. Set up. Excellent. Oh, that was great fun. So that's Mr. Nick Steed. Great player. Good bloke. So um, thanks for joining us. Sorry about the slight mix up at the beginning, but um, it went well and uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. So it'll be out on um, the uh, on the YouTube channel later on this week. So thanks for joining us again and um, see you soon.